Hey guys, I am Big and Scary. I'm bringing you another StarCraft 2 replay, this time featuring in our bottom right hand corner, Aukamanza. Auka? Auka, our red Zerg. He is uh, in our bottom right hand corner. He's up against Michael, our blue Terran in the top left. We're on Ohana. It's red versus blue. Natural assumption being that this is a ladder match. I believe both players are in diamonds, but don't quote me on that. We can just swing one way or another uh, for all my knowledge, because my knowledge is dated. It is dated, unlike me this holiday season. <laughs> that being said, you know what's not dated is the uh, the matchup between Zerg versus Terran because of that massive uh, Infestor debuff, that uh, nerf on the Infestors. We're going to see a lot of bio play out of Michael, I'm sure, just because that's very much in vogue right now. And Auka has to kind of fumble his way around what exactly his build's going to be. There's not a lot of AoE in the form of Zerg, especially not now because those uh, the range for the Infestor's fungal is just shot to pieces. So do you rely on Banelings to kind of keep the marine numbers manageable? Or do you rush straight to air? Do you... Uh, Go, go for roaches and just kind of try to hammer down the door. There are a lot of different options, but uh, those options have to be improved significantly because it used to be we could rely on those infestors behind the roaches, rely on the infestors with the uh, zerglings, rely on the infestors to buy you some time after your mutalists got shot to pieces. But now, you know, the, the, all those all those fallbacks are uh, are gone, so it's, it's very much all-in-ish. Uh, for the state of being right now, and uh, it's it's a period of flux. I think they're gonna, in honesty, they're gonna make the investors more powerful again, or change up their uh, their uses entirely. Maybe just a slow mechanic on the uh, fungal growth, or something like that. I don't know. I don't work for Blizzard. I don't. One gas going up for Michael. He's getting that first refinery or that first back barracks also. First gas is probably going to be used for an add-on from the barracks, so keep an eye out for that, as well as any tech structures that might be built up in the wings. That first overlord, the only overlord from Alka, is moving up. There's no scouting drone. Even if there was, it probably wouldn't be able to swing through, depending on the timing. And that first SCV moves off to scout. Scout for himself. On the other side of things, Alka has gotten a 15 pool, 15 hatch up. It was a pool first build. Pool's totally done, but still no gas at all. And he hasn't built any, uh, with the exception of a single Zergling. So it appears he's going for a heavy economy build, which is kind of weird because normally you'd see hatch first out of that. However, the early pool allows him to get out the uh, queens a little bit earlier than normal. So he's got that first queen already halfway done. Uh, second queen's not going to be built down at the natural. I think the first queen's going to finish first, and we'll probably see it built at the main. Uh, Michael's coming in with his first SCV, scouting SCV, comes in, scouts, did he get the gas? I don't think, I don't think he was just barely, barely, barely with, out of range of this gas right here. I think he saw this one down here. Uh, but he also didn't see anybody going um, from one way or another, and either that means Zerg already has 100 gas, and we're about at that time where they would stop mining completely, but uh, honestly, I think it's a safe assumption to make that there's no gas at all. Uh, you, you saw the saturation down here at the mineral lines. He probably guessed that it's a heavier economic build, especially with the hatchery going up on the low ground. Queen has popped out and waddled her way down to the second hatchery, and we can see that, oh, there was no larva inject from that queen, is it? Yeah, she's got awfully high energy. Not super high, yeah, high enough energy, so she probably needs to start spending down that energy. The factory, which was built in the wings, is repositioned to take advantage of the reactor that was built on the barracks and a command center going up on the high ground behind this aggression. I wonder what Michael's planning on doing with all this gas. He's got 200 gas right now. Alka is moving in with his overlord just to scout that command center on the low ground so he knows, or on the high ground, he knows that it's going to reposition down on the low ground shortly. So Alka might, we could see a large swell of uh, units coming out of Alka. No, he's going to be relying on queens. Two more on the way, five total uh, out in just a matter of seconds. So wow, this is a heavy queen opening, probably a six queen opening, and it's going to do wonders against these Hellions that are coming down from Michael. Three Hellions, not quite enough to take on two queens, especially on creep. The queen's going to town as well as two more being pulled down. Oh my goodness, they're just taking so much damage. One of them goes down completely. However, with the two queens pulled off, it looks like no, Alka is, wow, moving his, uh, Drones just directly in the path of Michael. It looks like they're going to get a couple of drone kills, however, with only three workers going down and uh, with three Hellions going down, that's 300 minerals uh, for the price of, what, 200? So I think Alka is going to come out ahead of that, even though he did lose a couple of his 
uh, you know, drones, and with that goes some mining time, but he's moving in with a couple more Hellions down at the low ground, and this time being far more successful at uh, not only delaying the mining time, but also uh, taking out a couple of those drones, pulling off a couple of drones from Alco, better control for his drones this time. However, the Queens are just continually trying to deal with this harassment coming out of Michael. Michael's definitely committing. You can see another two Hellions are heading down, uh, but they're not going to be very successful if they continue to directly engage the Queens. They needed to swing around, go up to the top, check out the main base because there's only one Queen, if any. Oh wow, none at all. And again, the pull. Alka pulling all of his drones so that they can just line up and uh, take maximum amount of AoE damage from Michael. Michael definitely having a heavy windfall on all those drones. A lot of them in the red or the yellow roasting away. My goodness, this is absolutely terrible for Alka. 27 over 30, 23. And Michael's CC has got to be finished. Actually warped in the orbital up on the high ground. And he's probably going to be repositioned. Needs to reposition right away and take uh, control of that of that uh, expansion. Hellions continue to stream in. Uh, but really his attention needs to be back at home. He's done plenty of damage on this harassment. He needs to stop the harassment right now. Save his minerals. Save his resources for something else. And uh, double up on the SCV production because he's got a small gap I mean 20 over 29 not the largest of differences especially with the amount of energy that those Queens can push out throw out another hatchery he's got quite a lot of money Alka can spin that down and re uh, re macro pretty quickly but if Michael continues to produce SCVs continues to throw down his mules he could probably skyrocket ahead and uh, dominate on the edge that he's he's taken right now engineering bay as well as one barracks going up what is this gonna be another reactor oh, wow so two reactors in play right now. Hellions are continually being produced from the factory, and it looks like they're coagulating down just to the south, or just to the north of that uh, ramp. But Alka now has plenty of Zerglings out on the field, and he can get a nice surround, especially with that wall off. Beautiful wall off from Mount Alka incorporating the evolution chamber as well as the queens. In all honesty, you could probably just position one queen here and another one down here and uh, chew to pieces those those Hellions and allow the rest of his Queens to get back to work but with the number of Queens he has out right now I think Michael's gonna have to pull back these Hellions are not gonna be very successful if they continue to push on the other side of things Michael has worked on his own saturation I mean 37 over 34 well you see that huge swell of roaches coming out as Alka has uh, bought himself some safety so they can actually build uh, more units wonder why he's getting the spore crawler I don't know what he's seen did he suicide in an overlord no this overlord remains alive having taken a little bit of damage starport is going down from Michael but uh, I think that's more just to get medevacs to support this heavy bio ball. I do not know what the spore crawlers are there for unless it's just part naturally is build. Engineering Bay finally going up on the barracks is going to be starting on those super important upgrades. Stim takes 160 seconds. Uh, it's going to be quite a while before Michael can move out with this heavy bio ball and actually do some damage. I think he's going to be relying on the Hellions to do uh, map control. And Alka is going to be relying on his queens to kind of counter those Hellions and they do a really good job countering Hellions as long as they can continue to control the door this is a really nice touch throwing down a spine crawler there right with that evolution chamber layer going up double queen uh, double gas has been tapped at both of the expansions there at the main and the natural expo third is going up and it looks like the Hellions are gonna have no problems chasing away the Zerglings and then once all the Zerglings are cleaned up will they get ballsy and try to push down to the third there's no saturation there once he sees that it's still being built he pulls back really doesn't want to overcommit doesn't want to step out onto the creep and get chewed to pieces by those queens another CC being built and another two gas being grabbed by Michael the second in tech lab but is not researching combat shields which is a peculiar choice I think looks like he's gonna be using that second tech lab just to mass produce the Marauders there goes the CC's or the combat shield very good. Hey, there's the AoE that I was talking about. Where's that Bane Lean? That's a beautiful choice there by Alka. He really needs to produce a lot of creep if he's going to use it successfully because stemmed marines can run circles around Bane Lanes if they really have good control behind them. And we can see with just the sheer number of reactors right now that uh, this is definitely going to be a very powerful bio bill in, in a couple of seconds. But as time ticks by, Alka is going to be narrowing down that harvester difference right now we see that 15 drones are on the way and bam <laughs> going from 45 to 60 harvesters in just a matter of seconds michael all of a sudden loses his harvester lead well if that's third orbital in position he'll be looking and thinking about taking a third in relatively short order centrifugal hooks being researched back at the baneling nest uh alka is definitely going to be relying on a heavy zergling and uh baneling build but without any other higher tech, I think uh, Alka is going to be 
burying himself. You know, he's going to be digging a very, very deep hole unless he gets some higher tech out. And what? I mean, right now he's spending a lot of his gas on the Evolution Chamber's uh, upgrades, but he's still got a thousand gas. What is he going to use that gas for? Our Spire would be absolutely fantastic, even just even just to get a greater Spire just that much faster. Uh, but I, I think he needs to start incorporating some higher tech. Definitely start spinning down that gas. Zergling was just a little bit out of position, allowing that orbital command to land. Not really going to cost Alka too much, especially with these uh, destructible debris going down and allowing Michael to come in and take out that poor Zergling. He's doing a great job, though. Let's hear it for the Zergling. He did 100, 100 damage. That's a good job before being burned alive. The uh, orbital has landed. There goes all the mules, and uh, this third's going to be producing its own SCV, so I think Michael, once again, actually, he's already. He's already caught up to that little gap that uh, Alka had bought himself in the Harvester lead. So economy-wise, definitely neck and neck. It looks like a small drop going off down at the third, but with the Queens rapidly reinforcing this area and the Zerglings, I don't think any of those drones went down. 18 over, wow, over one. That is, uh, that's pretty brutal. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Infester pit as well as a Spire. So Alka realizing that triple digit or quadruple digit gas is usually a bad thing. Uh, unless you have a plan on spinning it down, so the Infestor Pit and the Spire both being built, to both of them, excellent, excellent, excellent decisions. You definitely want to get down the Infestor Pit just so you can get the Hive up, but the uh, the Spire just so you can use some of that gas. And I, I don't mean to discount the Infestors entirely, I mean you can still use them and they're still very, very useful, especially with a heavy bio ball. But the level of skill required to use them right now, whenever we're not as familiar with their range, not as familiar with the uh, the type of damage that is, is done and the, the risk in using them. So, I don't know. It's it's harder to use them now because we're so used to the instantaneous shot. But it looks like Alka is going to be using them eventually, getting that pathogen gland up. And the Spire just now finishes immediately starting the... Pa oh, the armor for the air and 16 mutas being built so yeah there goes all that gas fantastic uh, so he's gonna have a very very mobile force in just a matter of minutes uh, he's got some fantastic creep spread and that creep spread will really allow him not only to identify wh where Michael is pushing with all those marauders and marines and those marauders are really going to soak up any baneling hits that do manage to sneak into the actual ball. But these Hellions are really going to do a good job at scouting in front of them. Catching a couple of those queens off on the wrong foot. The marauders arriving to help take them down. But, oh man, all those marines are just so, so exposed right now. Pushing forward way too far. No split at all for Michael. There goes the massive hits. But all those hits were down on the marauders. And those marauders do an excellent job at weathering them. Over here we saw the hits on the marines cutting down a lot of that DPS. And more importantly, all that anti-air. The Mutalis is coming in. And since there's no anti-air here to accompany Michael's marauders, uh, they have to pull back because all the AoE was gone down, but man, those stem marauders do so much damage to buildings, it looks like that third did indeed go down, and that's going to be a substantial hit to the mineral income that uh, Alka has right now. Another eight mulists coming out, so how much damage can Michael expect to take from this? Not much. He's got plenty of time to throw up plenty of missile turrets. Look at that, five missile turrets behind the uh, mineral lines, and then he's also got so many reactor barracks that he can mass produce uh, the very hardy plethora of anti-air in the form of those marines. These zerglings are exactly what needs to happen. Some harassment there. Alka being pretty, pretty, pretty devilish with all those mutalists coming in, taking out a couple of couple of structures. Did he take out any of the tech labs? I don't know. No scarring next to uh, any of these barracks. Nor did the reactors go down, but it looks like, wow, this entire saturation has gone down. 29 over 25, a huge hit to the economy of Michael, who was a couple seconds ago was up to 70 harvesters. But now he's down to 50, and he's going to have to slowly claw his way back up out of that hole and uh, resaturate this third. Also probably needs to grab the gas. We can see that he's got plenty of gas right now, but if he decides to get any any other form of tech, maybe those ghosts, he could be uh, very, very successful. Right now he's having a hard time to deal with all those mutalisks. He does have a hardy constitution in the form of those marines. Uh, the, they're, they're very good against mutalisks, especially if you can stim just at the right moment. But uh, with those mutalisks kind of harassing, you can see that Michael's having to push out with a far less uh, intimidating force. Uh, 
a lot more Marines this time around than there were uh, Marauders just because that's what's easy to mass produce really, really quickly. And also their added AOE will uh, kind of help Michael protect them. But unfortunately it makes them very vulnerable to that, which is all those Banelings. All of a sudden all those Mutalisks are uh, having a field day with the one or two Marines that survived. And these Marauders have nothing to shoot except for a couple of Zerglings. Uh, allowing the Mutalists to kind of rain down fire on them. Switching over to the resources lost tab, we can see that Michael's really had uh, a hard time in the last couple of engagements, taking way too much damage because he doesn't have the AoE and isn't doing the splits on those Banelings. That being said, he's definitely got an economic advantage. He managed to take out that third uh, and is just really keeping out <laughs> Alka uh, feeling kind of kind of hard on himself. He, he, he can't continue to produce these Mutalisks. Making six more is definitely a mistake. He needs to be spending that gas on something else. The Mutalisks have done their job. They've done a lot of damage. They've created an opening for Alka, but he's not transitioning into that opening. Get that Greater Spire up. Get that Hive up. He's got the Hive. Oh no, he's got the Lair. Get the Hive up. Get a Greater Spire. Transition to Broodlords. Maybe get some Infestors up. You already have the path uh, Pathogen Glands. But every 100 gas, 100 minerals that you spend on the Mutalisks is absolutely wasted because Michael's just going to continue to produce Marines. And you've gotten some lucky hits, you've gotten some good hits with those Banelings on all those Marines. But as time goes on, Michael's going to be able to steamroll over Alka. Uh, really just because he's got a superior unit composition. He's got some high-level tech that's supporting them. Those Marauders are going to be absorbing quite a lot of hits from the Banelings. And uh, look at this. Man, those Mutalists just melt away whenever they fly over them. Uh, but that signals that Aoka is actually pressing the advantage once again, picking off a couple of those Marines, signaling for Michael that there's no turning back now. He's pushing forward with a quick stem to his Marines and Marauders, pushing down to the bottom left. Looks like this third is destined to fall, but there's really no saturation there at all. The <laughs> Mutalisks have successfully been repelled, but not because they're... Uh actually done killing everything up here and not because there's something more powerful to kill them it's because they, they're needed back at home 60 zerglings are on the way but there's no banelings this time excellent concave on that fourth just naturally done by the ai and now the mutalisks are having left to fend against all those marines and this is exactly what michael needed pushing up into the natural and just wow those 60 zerglings there was 60 zerglings getting spawned and 27 remain uh, yeah 19 of them are being made into banelings though so this second, this natural is definitely going to go down. You can see the fourth is being built up on the uh, top left. I don't think Michael's going to manage to push up into the, the main just yet because here comes the Banelings. Another fantastic blow from all those Banelings, but the damage has already been done. Michael's taken out two bases. Uh, yeah, we have the five finally coming on now, but now <laughs> Alcon, who was on three bases fully mining just a couple seconds ago, is now down to a one with another one just now finishing. Yeah, he's still got... a. Uh, uh, Man, 30 harvesters. <laughs> How much damage was done on that? 37 over 30. That is ridiculous. The economy for Alkmans is, is in shambles. He's finally got the tech out that he needed to, but he's got no bank. He's got no money. He's going to be relying way too heavily on these Mutalisks to make something happen. And in all honesty, those Mutalisks cannot openly engage the units that uh, Michael can produce so very, very cheaply. Those those Marines are the perfect counter to those Mutalisks right now. And yeah, they have a nice hardy ball. I mean, 26 Mutalisks, that's a lot of damage. But pound for pound, one Marine and one uh, Mutalisk, the Terran's going to come out on top. He might not necessarily kill a Mutalisk, but damage-wise, he's definitely going to come out on top. And we can see that Alkman is just continually producing those Mutalisks. Two more on the way. And that's a mistake. He needs to spend that money on something else. He needs to spend it on getting his economy back up and running. And also that Greater Spire start producing out those Broodlords so that they can actually engage this and maybe spend some money on those investors. Alkman, though, is doing a good job keeping Michael contained. Michael could probably push down to the south and do a significant amount of damage. We can see some Marines are down here. Probably was a drop from Michael that I totally missed. Maybe it got repelled from the Spar Crawlers because those were built quite a long time ago. Uh, however, I'm not 100% sure. Those Mutalists could straight up engage these... Uh, these missile turrets, but really this side of the base is not what he needs to be attacking. He needs to be attacking over here at this third from Michael. But man, Alkman is really feeling the heat right now because as time goes on, I mean, Michael's got all the gas he needs, all the money he needs, all he needs is time. He's producing a massive amount of Marines right now, nine of them on the way, and uh, he's so well defended that really Alkman just does not have a chance at engaging Michael without taking significant losses. Yeah, he's poking up here, taking down a barracks, probably going to take down that missile turret too. But in just a couple seconds, uh, Michael's going to press stim on his Marines and uh, force them away. Wow, Alkman's doing quite a lot of harassment there. Slow reaction from Michael, but he really wants to protect his main base rather than, uh, you know, down here where his orbital command's got a lot of health and his Marines are allowed to respond pretty sluggishly to that area. 
Michael's going to have to be thinking about either taking out another base or pushing out with a large force pretty soon. He's definitely got the force that he needs just to push out and deal a death blow. I do not see Alkman, Alkmaz in uh, surviving another full fredge attack from Michael. Uh, and as I say, that it looks like he was making motions like he wanted to push out, but instead he's having to turn around and deal with the harassment once again. I think Michael should just throw caution to the wind, push out right now. Take out this fourth in the bottom left, start in the bottom left, and then swing right into the top right. Because once you get in here and start taking this out, it doesn't really matter as long as the uh, Connie's in shambles. And he, you know you know his main's already taken out completely. I'm curious to why he didn't rebuild a hatchery. He's got the money in the uh, bottom left, but probably because he wants to spend so much money on uh, producing drones. Got a lot of weak larvae there, actually, just not, not doing anything at all. Michael coming in just... Oh my goodness, decimating the economy once again. We can see that the uh, Mutalisks are nowhere to be seen. Oh, here they are. <laughs> Mutalisks finally arriving, taking out a couple of those medevacs, but really they can't engage the main ball because a quick stem from those marines uh, just succeed in taking out that ball completely. The only other mining base from Alkman is going to go down, and Michael's going to take this handily. He's just going to be a... a second or two for Alkman to realize that these Banelings are couldn't possibly do the damage necessary to them, especially with those Marauders in the front. Really good job keeping those Marauders in the front. Uh, surprising amount of damage done from all those. <laughs> He's pulling back again. Oh man, it's just those Baneling hits. A little bit of a split could keep those Banelings alive. and I mean those Marines alive from those Banelings. And in all honesty, Michael's just taking massive damage from that. You can see the resources lost have heavily favoring uh, Zerg because he's been so successful with the harassment of his uh, mutalisks, even though they're the exact opposite of what you'd expect to do well against a heavy bio ball. Uh, really, Michael's just, he's got the unit composition. He just needs to have a, a good engagement. His third is going to go down, but that's okay. It's pretty much completely mined out as it is. Wow, Michael's almost 100% mined out. It looks like he's repositioned an orbital down in the bottom left corner and used a lot of his mules to get up the uh, mineral count necessary. But man, these mutalists are having their way with Michael's Michael's main base right now. They are they're doing a significant amount of damage both to the uh, economy as well as the infrastructure of Michael's main base. 71 over 57 supply. It is anyone's guess at who's going to come out on top of this one. But what is this down here? The SCVs taking it to the house. I was hoping it was like a surprise attack of Marines or something like that. Look at that mineral income. 2,000 minerals, and each one of those is going to be directly translated into a Marine. So yeah, this infrastructure is taking a hit, but this infrastructure is doing just fine for Michael. He's making quite a lot of fully upgraded Marines. I mean, 3-3 three, three right now. And the 2-1 uh, two, two, Mutalisks are really just having a hard, hard time against those Marines. So Alkman can, in all honesty, feel really, really good about himself right now. He he's, feels like he's taken out two of the expansions, one of which was the only mining expansion from Alkman because he doesn't know about this, which is a really clever play by Michael, throwing down all those mules, heavily mining the this expansion, and is uh, affording him with a lot of minerals that is allows him to get this ball out. And once again, these Marines are pushing down. We can see that the income from Alkman is pretty much non-existent at this point. Uh, his main is completely mined out. He's long distance mining from his third, I believe. And uh, really, Michael's got the advantage on this one. Alkman has done quite a lot of damage. He's got a very nice standing force, but it's a standing force that cannot directly engage Michael's main army, which is moving off down to the bottom left. Without Banelings, there's no hope for Alkman to repel this. Uh, and even with those Baneling hits that he got, the, the first, second, and third engagement, really, this can, this can just continually happen because Alkman is not aware of the expansion in the top left corner. Uh, the mutalists are continually taking down the supply depots, but really Michael's not going to be supply dropped, any, uh, supply blocked anytime soon. And with the Marines continually being produced, I don't see how those. There we go. Whew. I don't see how those mutalists were going to be able to push much farther into the base. Yeah, they could probably succeed in taking out these structures right here, uh, but any farther than that, the Marines are going to get in large enough number that they'd be able to push up, stem, and then uh, the number of mutalists had slowly been worn away down to what we see now, which is what, 15? Is it 15 mutalists? Yeah, 15. And a lot of Marines from Michael. Really good job for both players. Michael, you've got to remember to split split your Marines uh, against Banelings because Banelings is really what you're going to be up against. It used to be infestors and splitting really didn't help unless you did it before the fight. But now you, you absolutely know those Banelings are coming. Marauders are fantastic against Banelings because they absorb so much damage from them. 
and uh, really mitigates the amount of AOE damage done to the Marines. So you keep them in the front of the, the uh, fight. They can absorb three three Baneline hits, no problem, and then and then you've got three less Banelines to deal with whenever they hit your Marines. Um, really nice play repositioning the orbital. Really nice play keeping your economy up and running and allowing yourself to turtle when you need it to turtle. Uh, de- I'd never felt like you were panicking whenever you were dealing with these Mutalisks Alkman. Uh, Mutalisks are fantastic the first round that you get them out, but then after that they become far less effective the more and more you produce them. It was basically a pit for your gas. Uh, You were doing a really, really good job with them, but that gas should have been used for something else. You had the hive, you need the greater spire, you need need another form of tech. Uh, And even some extra gas for banelings, keep them up so that you don't have to panic and lose this third, and then by the time he's in your natural, then you've got banelings. No, you need those banelings up uh, beforehand. That's basically it for me, guys. If you have a game you want me to cast, you could PM me here or on Reddit. One way or another, I will see you guys later. I am Big and Scary. Bye.